when a couple are getting divorced or they're splitting up, um, it makes a huge difference if they can be amicable about things. Uh, the reason being is, is there is a property involved and you both have emotional attachment to that particular property. You'd like to think that you don't, but believe me, everybody does. Um, if you can talk to your ex or you're going through with your ex, how it affects both of you, then it actually makes it a very easier process for both of you to decide whether or not to sell it, whether or not to keep it. You know, one of you live there or the other one live there, you know, whichever way around you want to do it. But the more you can talk, the better it is. For example, I had a client ring me the other day who explained that her husband had walked out two weeks ago and she didn't understand anything about the mortgage because it's not something she'd ever been involved in but it was very adversarial so they weren't talking and I recommended that they they spoke to a mediator just purely because that person will be a step back from what's going on between those two they'll make sure that they talk rather than yell at each other to give them the idea of how they can proceed I mean there's three children involved they need to be able to work out how to proceed on an amicable basis to ensure that everybody is happy and comfortable where they are. So, but if they, if all they're gonna do is yell at each other, that's never gonna work. And it'll end up with the house being sold and him renting, her having to rent because she's not working on a full-time job and children moving schools and it would just won't work for everybody. So they, they need to find somebody, a mediator would be ideal, but they need to find somebody to talk to or who can stop them from yelling. So, you know, that always works much better. Some people come up with an amazingly creative solutions to how they can proceed with a mortgage and their life. Um, I've got to set up a pair of clients who have recently split up and uh, they've now decided that it's a good idea for them both to continue to live in the same house. Uh, the lady is going to literally buy the ex-husband out but he has got the right to remain in the property and for the rest of his life. That's great if it can work, however they don't like each other and they don't talk to each other. So I can imagine that's going to be slightly awkward when it comes down to living with each other or if one of them wants to get a new partner or whatever happens, I think it's gonna be slightly awkward. I feel if I'd been there from the start and I'd offered them the advice of maybe speaking to a mediator, they could have looked at it from a long-term point of view that it may not work unless they actually become friends and actually then share a house as friends. Whereas at the moment, it's still very argumentative and still very, very raw and they are now having to live together in a property basically until one of them passes away, which could be two minutes or it could be 22 years or even longer. So having a mediator there may well have made them think about things in the long term rather than just the short term, i.e. the lady wanted to keep the house, the, part, the husband wanted to keep the house. It, it's not necessarily the right thing to do but you're not going to know that until somebody points that out to you. And sometimes, if the agreement's already been made before you speak to me, or, you know, a, a mediator, then it's, sometimes it's just too late to change things because you've already signed the paperwork and now you just need the mortgage, as, uh, as some people just say. And it's not always the right thing to do. In my experience, the best time to talk to somebody with regards to your mortgage and your finances is right at the beginning. Realistically, before you go and see uh, a solicitor or a lawyer, just purely so then you've got a, a fighting chance of knowing what it is you can do so that when the solicitor gets involved, you're not asked, they're not asking you to then go away and find out further information, which then takes time, which costs you can cost you more money. Um, if you've spoken to myself or another financial advisor with regards to your finances, you can go to the solicitor and say, okay, this is what I know, this is how much I can borrow, this is what we want to do. If you've had mediation, it makes it that much easier and possibly even a lot more cost effective where your solicitor's concerned because they don't have to write off to other solicitors and get Nazi letters back and you don't have to worry about anything like that. When you split up and you've got children, it's very difficult because you both need to have a property that can support the children so the children can come and see you or stay. I think probably the best example I've got of that is uh, they split up, they didn't get on, they couldn't live together any longer. However, they bought a house at either end of a road. 
So the children actually didn't necessarily worry where which house they were going to. They would leave a note for mum saying I'm at dad's or they'd leave a note for dad saying I'm at mum. They had bedrooms at both houses and it works out lovely because they're, they're that far apart that they're not in each other's pockets but the kids can just walk wherever they need to go and as long as the other parent knows where they're going it makes perfect sense. It doesn't always work out like that just purely because there's not always enough money in the pot for you both to do that so sometimes you have to kind of think about whether or not it's better to rent a bigger property than buy a bigger property because sometimes that does work out better for you because you can use the money that you've got from the divorce if there is any to rent for a little while just to make sure that you've got the size of property that you need to look after the children and as long as you are fairly close or you have a good routine for those children then it will it generally works out quite well it's very unusual for the children not to see their parent the other parent sometimes that's not always the case but you know sometimes it does work out very well and again it's down to you two whether or not you set it up correctly in the first place if you don't it will fall apart so you really need to have maybe that third party that sits there and says okay how is it going to work in the future what's going to happen when the children get to 15 and actually don't necessarily want to spend every weekend with dad or mum you know those things that you have to take into consideration because it's a long-term thing when you've got children you know they're there for life